If you have feed coming in at stoichiometric proportion, it reacts completely and forms the stoichiometric proportion products. The enthalpy that is formed is defined as the heat of reaction. In this example, if we have solid calcium carbide reacting with a liquid water, and it forms a solid calcium hydroxide product, as well as a gaseous acetylene, the change in enthalpy of reaction is equal to minus 125.4 kilojoules per mole. Now, while this number 1254 kilojoules per mole was read off a table from a textbook, if I did not have that information, I could have gone to a table as well and looked up the heats of formation at 25 degrees Celsius and one atmosphere. For this, I find that the calcium carbide value is minus 62.76 kilojoules per mole. The amount of water is minus 285.84. Calcium hydroxide is minus 98659. And the acetylene, the gaseous acetylene, is positive 226.75. If I had to take those and using the equation that we've got on the top here and worked out the difference in enthalpy just from these numbers, I would do the following. I would want to look at the delta H, so that's the change across it, and would start out by the enthalpy or the change in enthalpy of the products minus the enthalpy of the reactants. In this instance, the products are these two on the bottom here, so that's simply going to be 226.75 plus the negative value, so let's rather write that as minus 986.5. Nine, so that's the enthalpy of the products. We are then going to subtract the reactants, and that is the water, which is minus 285.84. But I need to remember that up at the top here, we had that the water, there were two waters in this reaction. So I need to multiply this value by two, and then I need to add to that the calcium carbide value of minus 6276. So again, let's just put that as a minus 62.76. So that change in enthalpy across that system, and remember this was all at 25 degrees Celsius for the products and the reactants, and it was 100% conversion. If I do this on a piece of paper next to us, the final answer on this is minus 125.4 kilojoules per mole. And if you look at that, that value there, 125.4 kilojoules per mole, is exactly the same value as the 1254 kilojoules per mole as we were given in a table before. The one thing that I cannot stress enough is that the value 125.4 had to be for a 100% conversion. The inlet and the outlet, so inlet plus the outlet temperatures, were all at 25 degrees Celsius. There was no excess, there was no nothing else that was coming into that system. If we look at a quick example on how we might use this, here is the example of C2H4 reacting with oxygen to form carbon dioxide and water. In this equation, we are given that the delta H of reaction is equal to minus 2878 kilojoules per mole, and we are asked if there is 2400 moles of second, per second of carbon dioxide forming, what is the delta H for this reaction? So the first thing to notice is that on this equation, the delta H of reaction is given as a per mole. So because it's given per mole, what that means is it comes with this reaction. So it means that for one mole of C2H4, 13 on 2O2s, 4 carbon dioxides, and 5 hydrogens, that's how many kilojoules are required for the heat of reaction. So in other words, what we need to look at is for this 2,400 moles that relates to the CO2. So because that relates to the CO2, the coefficient in front of it is 4. So we need to divide that by 4 to give us the actual extent for this reaction. The delta H of that would then be equal to that 2400 2, rather divided by 4 multiplied by minus 2878, which will equal minus 173, sorry, 1.73 times 10 to the 6 kilojoules per second. If this question had said that the information here was the same, 
but the products or the reactants were coming out at a different temperature, we would have to approach this slightly differently. In that instance, we would not be able to use the delta H reaction, and this would all have to change. So what we would then do is the same way as we calculated or we checked the delta H previously, where the delta H would have to equal to the change in H of the products minus the change in the delta H of the reactants. In that instance, we would have to look at the delta H of formation. And if there is a change in the temperature, if it's not at the same temperature, we'd have to use an MCPD T-type calculation, and there might be a mass in front of that heat of formation, minus the same thing here, delta H of formation, plus an MCP delta T type calculation if they are not at the same temperature. If we are also told in this equation that it does not go to completion, or if the reactants are not coming in stoichiometric proportion, or if there are some impurities in this, we are going to have to follow the same approach, where now the mass values in here become important, and we have to calculate those first, and then use those masses of the different components to work out the delta H, which again will be different to the delta H of reaction, which is only for 25 degrees Celsius and complete reaction.